Good afternoon to our students, staff, and parents. In May, I promised you that the Oxford School District would work diligently to provide an update about our plans to return to school in the fall. Today is June 15th, and I want to share with you the work that has been done and will continue to be done so that we can return to an environment that is safe and secure for our students and staff. Let me start by saying we all have been under the pressure of uncertainty over the past months. I want to thank you for taking the numerous surveys we have sent since spring break because your voice matters in our decision-making process. Our surveys indicate that the majority of our families are wanting to return to school. I too am one of those parents who just wants to get back to normal. But as your superintendent, I know the work, expense, and the risks that it will take to get us there safely. At the May 28th board meeting, a committee was approved for the purpose of developing priorities and metrics that the Board of Trustees would use to draft a policy to define the conditions of reopening and operating schools during the COVID-19 pandemic. This committee is made up of city leaders, OSD parents, board members, and staff. We have posted a list of that committee on the district's COVID-19 webpage. We met on Friday, June 5th and June 12th and considered what was best for students, staff, and the community through the lens of physical health, social emotional health, student achievement, and the financial considerations both short and long term. The plan is for the Board of Trustees to approve a policy at our meeting on June 29th. I invite you to tune in to our board meeting to hear the discussion. Once approved, we will begin the process of communicating to you and the public how schools will look in August. Again, these are subject to change based on circumstances. While we continue to deal with the effects of COVID-19, we are also dealing with something much greater that has potential to either bring us closer together or break us further apart. How we react to each other, our students, our parents, and our staff will show our commitment to one of our most important core values, equity. Social and racial injustice is a part of Oxford's history, and we, have, we will have to deal with its consequences for some time. We have an extremely diverse student body with over 29 primary languages spoken. We know in the Oxford School District that the color of a person's skin does not predetermine their ability to succeed and pursue happiness. In recent years, we have taken steps to bridge the gap and open more opportunities for our African American and Hispanic students. Although we have begun this work, there is still much left to do. First of all, I want to introduce to you our Equity Director, Latanya Robinson, who is a vital guide in this process. Latanya returned to our district in 2019 and has been establishing practices to identify the support needed so that the outcomes of our African American and Hispanic students can continue to improve. I have asked Latanya to explain some of the areas in which the district has made progress. One of the main things that we've, we've talked about and we've made progress in is our MTSS, our multi-tier system of supports. Our behavior coaches and intervention coordinators, counselors have begun the process to become aligned and provide a safety net and supports to students who struggle. Our whole child initiative, the Oxford School District partnered with the Palmer Home to provide whole child supports and a district championship team has been established and school champion teams have been meeting all year. The two of those uh, things, the MTSS and the whole child, have been aligned as well. Cultural responsiveness and social emotional professional development was also provided during our Passion PD days. One another thing that we didn't quite get to before post-COVID was the equity task force that we were planning to establish last semester that is also in the works for the 20. 21 school year. We've expanded day treatment as well, a therapeutic behavior intervention program that will replace our punitive alternative school program, the OLC, which was one of the most racially divided and oppressive of all of our schools. That is not to say that the teachers or Ms. Logan did not do a great job. They did and have for a long time. However, further change was and is needed. In addition, the district supports the AVID program at Oxford Intermediate, Middle and High School. This is a program that is targeted for non-traditional and potential first-generation college students. Recently, the board approved a revised dress code that removed any discriminatory languages or practices. 
We also have areas where further work needs to be done. These areas are Insights, the Oxford School District's Gifted and Talented Program. Our Gifted and Talented Program is one of the most racially misrepresented programs in the district. The participation rates of minorities who qualify for Insights is well below 10%. We have to improve in this area. We are evaluating different assessments that will be more equitable. Advanced placement. It should not be a surprise that minority participation in AP courses at Oxford High School mirrors that of insights in second grade. This is unacceptable and the district through AVID and other resources will be looking, looking to encourage more African American and Hispanic students into upper level courses. As part of our whole child initiative, the code of conduct and the process for discipline referrals must be reevaluated. Our work is not done. We are dismantling systemic oppressive structures and opening opportunities for all children. Operationalizing equity is hard and potentially polarizing work, but we will stay the course. Again, I invite you to tune in to our June 29th board meeting at 5 p.m. Thank you for your hard work and diligence to keep Oxford safe.